Hey, Menorcan Navy, Cap Mandy coming to you today from the Menorcan Mullet. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about a rule proposal change that's coming down from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, regarding the right whale and the right whale's migratory pathways along the Atlantic Ocean of the United States. Uh, NOAA is in the process of trying to change a rule uh, that mainly affected ships. Uh, but they're going to change the rule and it's going to affect a lot more people, a lot more livelihoods. And we're just really wondering if maybe they haven't looked at all the options here before making such a drastic move. So kind of follow us along here with the video and then uh, let us know what you think. Well, there is no doubt that the North Atlantic right whale has been persecuted for a very long time. It actually got its name because it was the right whale for whaling ships. Uh, it's slow speed and uh, relatively ease at which it was taken made it a choice whale for the whaling ships of the 1800s. But here we are, and this is a proposal by NOAA to extend the safety circumference of this protection act uh, currently during the season these whales are protected uh, by uh, limiting the speed of very large ships those over 65 feet to 10 knots or less they want to extend this rule to include uh, vessels between 35 and 65 and make that rule that in these zones, the speed limit is set and uh, no will enforce it through whatever means they have, maybe through drones or satellites or the AIS identification system. Now we can see as the proposal here by NOAA, you can kind of see how it, it progresses down the eastern coastline of the United States, starting early and ending um, uh, about uh, April, a little later here, but in our zone it would be between uh, November 15th and April 15th where this uh, safety area would be extended. Now, listen to a webinar that was put on by Noah about this proposal and uh, just brought up a question or two, but still have some things that I don't think that they've really put enough uh, forethought into before enacting this drastic rule. Now keep in mind, this rule is gonna affect a lot of vessels, a lot of charter fishermen, uh, commercial boats, uh, uh, those boats that work in the shipping industry, uh, shuttling pilots out. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty big uh, area that's gonna, that's gonna impact, and it's gonna impact a lot of these vessels in, in probably a, a not so good way. But are there some other ways that maybe we can uh, move forward to give the right whales protection they need so that we can see their numbers rebound without these drastic measures that are being proposed? Now, mortality causes in the right whale come in uh, several different ways by the hands of human beings. Uh, one is entanglement through uh, vertical line fishing, uh, fish pots, crab pots, um, uh, those kind of things. Fishing techniques that have a weighted uh, object at the bottom and a rope that goes to the surface on a buoy. Those are uh, certainly issues and I'm sure many of you have seen uh, entanglement issues with uh, whales dragging along ropes and buoys and probably fishing gear. That is a big concern, no doubt. Uh, second one is uh, uh, by prop strikes when propellers uh, hit the flesh of uh, a whale at the surface and cause damage uh, to the whale in a uh, traumatic way. And uh, another way is by blunt force trauma from the mass of a vessel 
striking a whale and causing damage to uh, internal organs or to the uh, a brain or, or bone structure of the, of the whale. Well, as for prop strikes, is there anything we can do to help prevent uh, these smaller vessels from damaging uh, the whales uh, through prop strikes? And one of those is, is with the use of prop guards, um, easily put on the uh, outboard engine. And a lot of these boats that are in this, in this length area are gonna be uh, powered with outboard engines, but uh, the introduction of this will help help with the with the prop strikes, and then second is you know, some of these vessels are equipped with jet drives and don't even have an exposed propeller on it, and we we don't see any provisions in the uh, proposed rule for these vessels. And something else we don't see in this proposal is any exemption for daylight hours versus nighttime hours. I can understand that during uh, nighttime, uh, trying to see a whale at the surface of the water could be very difficult. But in the daylight hours, operating smaller vessels, which are much more maneuverable, uh, it seems like this part would be a little excessive. And if this modification could be made, uh, I think it would uh, go a long ways to helping out um, those guys that are depending on uh, say fishing during the day uh, versus versus operating at nighttime. And it seems to me that if they really were interested in protecting these whales, uh, they could fit these mothers. And now I think we're only talking about 25% of the population that is of calving age that can have a baby whale, 25%. And they say there's uh, 400 right whales left in the ocean. So we're talking about a hundred animals that we couldn't put some sort of transponder system on and connect it with the AIS identification system that's already in place on ships and these other vessels. And you would completely eliminate the operation of these vessels around these, around these whales. Um, it seems like that system would go farther than anything else to help protect the North Atlantic right whale. Well, hey guys, thanks for listening to me today. I know I was just a little bit, uh, just kind of rambling along there, but uh, I think there's some issues here that need to be addressed. Uh, some data that is not yet in this study that needs to be in there before this decision is made. And I think they can really make a difference in trying to protect the right whale. I am all for protecting the right whale, but let's do it smartly and let's do something that's really gonna protect these whales. Hey, that's all we got for today. Thank you guys for listening.